So, all right. So let's start. Uh, can everyone hear me back there? Okay, awesome. All right. So let's quickly start. So <clears throat> whenever we talk about our applications, we usually uh, sort of talk about the features that uh, our application provide. But uh, it is the fact that most often than not, our application is judged uh, based on the performance of the application, which is not sort of the feature, but it's like not a functional functional aspect of it, but the non-functional aspect of it. So in modern time, performance matters a lot. So <clears throat> today I will talk about uh, one of the things that you can do to actually improve your uh, web and mobile application uh, performance. And uh, since it's uh, Singapore CSS, so yes, we will talk about CSS. All right. so. <clears throat> Critical rendering path. So critical path, this terminology is uh, not new. Like this terminology is like probably a century old. People usually use this uh, critical path terminology to describe the projects, the project management aspect, like how to sequence things to get things done. So, but in the context of uh, application, web application, uh, critical rendering path is uh, the amount of processing or the series of steps required to actually convert your resources like HTML, JavaScript, CSS into actual pixels. So, I mean, usually like the loosely translated thing is like how fast the page or your mobile app load uh, when you are accessing it for the first time. Um, there are sort of uh, similar terminologies people use, like above the fold, first impression. But the most important thing about a critical rendering path is that it, it actually determines the perceived performance of your application. It may or may not be your application actual performance, but it is the perception that user get while accessing your application, which is pretty important because first impression is pretty much the last impression. <clears throat> All right. Okay. <clears throat> so we will talk about something like this. So the first one is the optimized uh, uh, critical path rendering. So as you can see that uh, in 1.5 seconds, both uh, show uh, both sort of unoptimized and optimized uh, uh, ways, both show the same page, but it is the thing that matters before that is you on the optimized rendering uh, rendering path you can see that uh, from the start you can see something sort of appearing on the page so it gives like sort of a, a perception that okay application is working it's not like okay blank page and then all of a sudden boom you get everything so let's see how we can do that all right <clears throat> So before we go, it's like just a quick 101 on uh, how browser actually go through the whole process. So everything starts with HTML. So HTML is like the thing that you write. Um, so what browser do, like first when you request the HTML, uh, you, the HTML is transferred to your browser, and then based on your um, HTML, we create a document object model. It's like the, we take the tokens from uh, HTML and then based on that, we create this whole tree. And there is another thing, um, which is uh, CSS ARM. So just like your uh, HTML, uh, CSS is also a resource. And then you can also parse it. You can also extract, uh, extract the tokens and create some somewhat a similar sort of a tree, but more related to CSS. So uh, the reason this relationship is important, the, the uh, thing that I want to stress is that uh, we need to understand like, how this thing works so to better understand uh, what, where we need to sort of optimize things in order to, uh, to get the best out of our application. So <clears throat> JavaScript also comes into the picture because when uh, your browser goes through your HTML, it actually looks for your JavaScript, Again, uh, yeah, if it is uh, async or deferred, then it will sort of not, it, it will ignore it for in the first pass, it will probably load it later. But generally, it will sort of load the JavaScript as a resource and CSS as a resource as well. 
and based on these two combination we create a render tree render tree is the visual as nodes of your of your dom uh, which also contain the your css styles and then the layout layout actually sort of deals with the actual res how your uh, nodes will uh, sort of place in the layout so this layout and this layout is different so after that the actual paint the rendering happens so the reason this is important is because unlike dom which is more of a iterative sort of a build as you start picking things css om uh, built in one go so when you your page load it actually looks for all the your link tags or all your style tags and start creating css om again i'm just trying to like sort of go through it but there are things that your browser can ignore based on the media tags and all that but generally it needs the everything your all the css to be loaded in order for it to proceed to that uh, rendering tree and the other stuff so if you have some <clears throat> so that is why we call it like it it blocks the rendering uh, uh, unless and until the css om is built properly and just imagine like if you have some uh, external css files and maybe if, if i hope you don't have like lot of external files uh, if so then please change but if you do and uh, so it will add uh, extra mills and uh, if you have like some uh, like um, network issues then you can pretty much just imagine like how uh, slow your first rendering can be so this is a problem i mean for web developers like damn this is a problem so <clears throat> this is where um critical comes um uh, to the rescue uh this is sort of a sh uh wrapper library that uh, andy usmani created uh i mean he's sort of a well known sort of a figure um <clears throat> the way i understand critical is like critical is uh, sort of a pretty wrapper over uh, another utility which is uh, penthouse and uh, that penthouse actually uses uh, puppeteer uh, which is another uh, it is a web uh, automation uh, utility from google to actually create uh, extract the css which is important for your first render and then sort of extract it out and what critical do is actually it put that uh, put that uh, css in line so during your first render your um, your browser will not make an extra call for the external css and um which is pretty neat um i mean i don't know how much time we have but uh, we can talk about like how this so penthouse is the key so penthouse actually create that logic uh, it it contain that algorithm to extract that uh, critical path css and how it uh, uh, create it uh, we can talk about it i can show you later um all right first let's go to demo all right so uh yeah that's the one okay so i am using um i'm using two different uh, pages one with the uh the normal uh normal page and the other one with the, the critical changes uh if you want to know the code so this is like a really simple code can everyone see this screen right so a really sort of a normal page like we create all the time you have the link tag uh, in the head and then all of this fancy javascript and all that <clears throat> so um let's quickly see how um the normal uh, uh this this application uh, loads so in order to sort of show how things work i'm just you doing a, a quick profiling so we'll do like some 101 on profiling as well awesome all right so yeah it's taking some time i have added uh, a throttling on the network just so that we can get this idea that how much actually it takes um all right okay so i have i'm sort of right now interested in just the loading events so i'm looking at the loading events so first it is if you look at these events you can see that 
um, we are trying to fetch the HTML because HTML is like the absolute starting point. Uh, and then after we get uh, the HTML, at some point of time, we are, okay, wait. So it's using loading other resources and then see, so we are also loading main uh, the uh, CSS file as well. And only after that, we there is an event called paint. So this means we are waiting for CSS, we are waiting for the CSS to come and then we create a CSS ARM and then only then, so this is the first paint. And just note down the time. So it's taking like pretty much two seconds, more than two seconds for the first render. Okay, so let's sort of same settings for critical magic, all right? So let me try to do a profiling. So, all right. So the thing to notice here, um, again, the same HTML call. And since we are not loading CSS, so it's not blocking the rendering. So the first paint is seven, 800 mils. I mean, that's like a huge improvement. I know like I did the tro throttling, but just to prove a point. So, all right, so uh, after I run this utility, so this is how it looks like. So you have all the critical CSS part extracted and put it there. But the question is like, your CSS will contain a lot of uh, style. What we are doing with the rest of the styles? Okay, so there is a trick for it. So it is loaded in the end. So there are two ways to do that, uh, depending on which browser you are using. So this is this uh, strategy will work for most of the browsers. So you are actually adding all the uh, you are adding all the CSS in the end. So it's not blocking your uh, main sort of first render, but you will eventually load it. It's more like it becomes more like a async JavaScript loading kind of a thing. So um, yeah, so that's how it works. Uh, let's quickly go back to, uh, okay. Uh, I want to play this thing here. All right, so quickly, let's look at the concern. So when I start playing around this thing, so I noticed three things that actually um, was a concern for me. The first thing is like uh, the the utility, the penthouse, and especially the wrapper over it, critical is uh, mainly for uh, progressive uh, web apps or mainly for very simple applications. But if you're talking about the enterprise applications, most of the pages uh, requires authentication. So um, uh, what they, the, the, re, uh, the way they are sort of generating this uh, critical CSS, it's actually opening up the actual page. So if you are using, uh, if you are, your page is behind some uh, authorization, so it needs some authorization, you will not reach there. So you need to do some, um, you need to do some sort of coding to work around that. And yeah, uh, for some reason I, I, I have some extra time to do that, so I don't know. So you need to do some custom coding here. So you need to sort of uh, go into the Puppeteer and say that, okay, we don't need your browser. I will create my own browser and I will do my own authentication. So uh, either you can go directly to your authentication or maybe you can run some scripts and put your authentication token in your local uh, storage or your cache, wherever, whatever strategy that you are using. So th this is one of the things that probably people will not be able to use it right away. Um, Another thing is, which is similar, is that most of uh, uh, the people, they use some sort of single, uh, single page application framework like AngularJS and all that. So uh, the problem with Angular, uh, like single page app, uh, frameworks are like, they are not very, very good at putting things right away at the top. Because if, for example, for, for Angular, it actually wo waits for your DOM event, like DOM content loaded to actually start your main module. And only then it actually start putting data. So even if you are using uh, this type of critical CSS for uh, just to get the first render, you will see the render, but you will see some uh, tags that are not sort of evaluated by um, Angular, which can be sort of a, 
I mean, you don't want that, right? Um, again, uh, so they have the ex um, plugins for uh, both Gulp and uh, Grunt. I use uh, Grunt. Uh, I, f I uh, face some issues, so uh, I need to uh, do my own fork on Puppeteer and uh, the Penthouse, a lot of peace. All right, so key takeaways, really quick, two things. I'm, the first one, I'm borrowing it from uh, Ilya, is don't go for the optimization first. First measure, and then optimize. Uh, there, there might be things that will be important for you based on your scenario, and there will be things a lot of people will say. So first measure, the, the profiling is one sort of a, thing, a tool that can help you. Another one is uh, the page load uh, Google utility that can help you a lot. Uh, the other thing is um, every bit counts. So the amount of data you are putting on the in a network, it counts. The every bit of effort you are uh, making to improve your application counts because there is no one uh, strategy to like solve all your performance issues. All right. So if you are interested to know. So these are all the links that I followed to actually explore this idea. I will share this uh, slide on Meetup. Uh, and if you have any questions regarding that, uh, you can ask uh, questions on Twitter. Or you can be someone like Chris who asked me uh, a question about food on Twitter. So yeah, you can do that as well. So <laughs> all right. So yeah, that's it. Thank you.